As discussed in our previous video, Consequences of the Second World War, World War II created an entirely new world claiming over 60 million lives across the globe. The old empires of France and Britain were ruined. Almost all the old colonies of the British Empire had gained their independence. Germany was divided, and remained so until 1990 and a new United Nations was declared. Before we move forward let's learn what a treaty means. It is a binding formal contract, or other written agreement that establishes obligations between two or more subjects of international law. In this video we will learn about the important treaties signed after the Second World War. Some of them are United Nations Charter The Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations Paris Peace Treaties Universal Declaration of Human Rights Fourth Geneva Convention The United Nations was formed from the ashes of World War II. The United Nations Charter was signed at a conference in San Francisco in June 1945, led by Britain, China, the Soviet Union and the United States. When the Charter took effect on October 24 of that year, a global war had just ended. Much of Africa and Asia was still ruled by colonial powers. United Nations Charter was negotiated by representatives from 50 countries. Fifty nations agreed to a charter that begins, We the peoples of the United Nations. This opening line is notable because today, the United Nations can, to some, seem to serve the national interests of its 193 members, especially the most powerful. Their priorities can stand in the way of fulfilling the charter's first two pledges, to end the scourge of war and to regain faith in fundamental human rights. In 1948, the United Nations proclaimed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. These include the right to not be enslaved, the right to free expression, and the right to seek from other countries asylum from persecution. However, many of the rights expressed, to education, to equal pay for equal work, to nationality, remain aspirational. The United Nations Security Council has 15 members, with five, Britain, China, France, Russia and the United States, holding permanent seats. It is far the most powerful arm of the United Nations. The Charter is vague in defining the duties of the Secretary General, the United Nations top official. Nine people have held the position, all men. The Secretary General is expected to show no favoritism to any particular country, but the office is largely dependent on the funding and goodwill of the most powerful nations. The Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, the treaty adopted on the 18th of April 1961, by the United Nations Conference on Diplomatic Intercourse and Immunities held in Vienna, and first implemented on the 24th of April 1964, provides diplomats with immunity from arrest, criminal prosecution and civil lawsuits in the countries where they are posted. Diplomatic immunity is vital to protect the diplomats serving in over 150 countries from political and legal harassment. If diplomats did not have immunity, they would be at constant risk of detention and prosecution on trumped-up charges, especially in countries where the government was to popular pressure. Diplomatic immunity is the protection given under international and UK law to foreign diplomats and their families. Unfortunately, this means that if they commit crimes like driving while drunk or abusing household workers, they have immunity from prosecution or lawsuits in courts. Diplomats are supposed to behave responsibly. The Vienna Convention states, without prejudice to their privileges and immunities, it is the duty of all persons enjoying such privileges and immunities to respect the laws and regulations of the receiving state. They also have a duty not to interfere in the internal affairs of that state. The Paris Peace Treaties were signed on 10 February 1947 following the end of World War II in 1945. The Paris Peace Conference lasted from 29 July until 15 October 1946. 
the victorious wartime allied powers, principally the United Kingdom, Soviet Union, United States and France, negotiated the details of peace treaties with Italy, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Finland. The settlement elaborated in the peace treaties included payment of war reparations, commitment to minority rights, and territorial adjustments including the end of the Italian colonial empire in Africa, Greece, and Albania, as well as changes to the Italian. In 1948, the United Nations approved the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a document that boldly proclaimed that recognition of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. Its 30 articles catalogue civil, political, economic and social rights. This vision is not a treaty but a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations. Its principles were incorporated in the 1975 Helsinki Accords, which subjected human rights abuses in the former Soviet bloc to closer scrutiny. Even today it remains the foundation of the global human rights movement, used by citizens from diverse cultures to express their hopes to the world. Human rights ideals have been accepted by people around the globe, whether they are students seeking democratic reform in China or women demanding equal protection under law in Pakistan. It offers a promise that could prove as important as the great revolutions of the preceding centuries. International law governing warfare is based on the four Geneva Conventions, which were revised and expanded after World War II. The Fourth Convention governs the protection of civilians. The conventions were updated by two protocols in 1977, in large part to deal with African guerrilla movements, to govern the protection of victims in international and non-international armed conflicts. While countries and militaries conduct internal investigations, and occasionally courts martial, it is unclear in what forum any international war crimes trial would take place. Neither the United States nor Israel, for example, has accepted the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. First Geneva Convention for the Amelioration of the Condition of the Wounded and Sick in Armed Forces in the Field, first adopted in 1864, last revision in 1949. Second Geneva Convention for the Amelioration of the Condition of Wounded, Sick and Shipwrecked Members of Armed Forces at Sea, first adopted in 1906. Third Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war, first adopted in 1929, last revision in 1949. Fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war, first adopted in 1949, based on parts of the 1907 Hague Convention 4. The texts of all the Geneva Conventions and the Protocols can be found on the website of the International Committee of the Red Cross.